Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and is born, what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, you are a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so much must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to, contempt, to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Seeing God with the eyes of the heart, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday in the life of the Church, always the Sunday after the Sunday of Pentecost. Last Sunday we celebrated Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the followers of Jesus, and we really celebrated in style and with great joy last week because we celebrated the groundbreaking for our construction and we donned red hard hats to be our Pentecost fire helmets uh, and we rejoiced in the movement and presence of God among us. And always after that joyous Sunday, the church says, now let's dedicate a Sunday to simply focus on God. Trinity Sunday, and it's this Sunday that traditionally the preacher is tasked with explaining the mystery of 
God being one person but three persons, one and three, three and one. And famously, St. Patrick used the example of the shamrock with the three globes that are part of the shamrock to talk about the one plant but the three globes. Uh, it's a Sunday where I've trotted out the illustration, and I love this one. I'm not going to trot it out today, but I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> uh, where you take three candles. So if you imagine me having, I need a, a third hand, uh, three candles, and I'd, I'd ask you, not a trick question, how many flames do you see? Three. And, and then if I took those three candles and had the flames all come together, not a trick question. I'd say, how many flames do you see? One, exactly. Three and one, one, three. I always love that illustration. But I often find that that kind of way of getting at this Sunday is a little bit left brain. By that I mean it works on our intellectual, uh, logical, try to make intellectual sense of all this. And so what I wanted to do today instead was talk about God not seeing through our intellect, our analytical side, but seeing God through the eyes of the heart and wondering what that really looks like and what that really means for our life. So it was a way of getting at the glory and mystery and holiness of God through the eyes of the heart. I want to tell a story. And for those of you who were part of the virtual pilgrimage this past Lent, I told this story. And, and it comes from a time when our family was vacationing at the Outer Banks. That's a favorite family reunion place for the Sherman family. In fact, we're going later uh, next month in June to celebrate Hannah's graduation, having a week reunion at the Outer Banks. Uh, and part of my tradition, as many of you know, I like to get up early and run, and uh, I'm a morning person. And I got up early one morning, and of course you're at the Outer Banks, so you go to the beach. Uh, we know about that in South Florida. And I was there for a time that I always enjoy, watching the sun rise uh, out of the ocean. And it was one of the days where there was a very regular breeze blowing. And so the waves were coming in in a very rhythmic pattern. And, and I was listening to the and it, was, and it was very regular, that rhythmic. Uh, the pounding of the waves. Uh, and as I was listening to the waves and enjoying the, that moment, uh, the sun, of course, came up as it always does. And uh, as it rose over the uh, horizon line and then the, the light beam started crossing the ocean, I immediately thought of something that I experience every Sunday as a priest. Uh, and you've experienced me doing it. And that is, at the time of communion, uh, I raise the chalice, and I have the, the host, the large piece of bread that we use, and I, I lift it up to you uh, at, the, at the end of communion. And that morning, um, as the sun came up round like the host, and the ocean being like the wine. It felt to me like a moment of communion for all creation. And I happen to know that the word for holy in Hebrew is kadosh. 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 The waves were singing, holy, holy, holy. The sun over the ocean, the ocean of all creation, was being lifted like a chalice and a host. And I knew with the eyes of my heart that God was there and present and glorious. It strikes me that those moments really do 
teach us and show us this is reality. That what Jesus called the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the reality and world of God, is, is all around us and is infused in all our lives and all creation. But we don't see it. And we're not open to the reality that's before us. And it, it just takes those moments where waves are saying, holy, 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 and the sun is rising, you know, like, like a piece of bread, a host over the chalice of, of the ocean for, for, for us to see it. So how do we, if that's, in, in my life, that's one of those moments where I saw God with the eyes of my heart. Um, how, how do we see more of that? How do, how do we open ourselves to those moments of communion and connection and mystery and awe and holiness and glory? Well, like Nicodemus, and we're like Nicodemus today in the gospel, you know, we, we come and we want to know God. That's what Nicodemus comes to Jesus for. You know, tell me about God. You're, you're a holy man, and uh, I, I know that, and you speak the truth about who God is. You know, tell me about this kingdom of God, Nicodemus says. And uh, Nicodemus, I think, is a little bit also caught up a little bit in his intellectual right brain kind of stuff. And Jesus says to him, and here's the path forward for seeing with guys, the eyes of the heart, Jesus says, you've got to be born from above. You've got to let the Spirit make you new. You've got to, and Paul talks about this, by the way, in the other reading. He talks about how all of us are, as Christians, are led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit blows where, it's, where it wills. You don't see it where it goes or where it comes from but it's through the Spirit that you begin to see the kingdom of God, Jesus says to Nicodemus, the, rea the reality and the glory of God. Now, we don't talk about this enough in the Episcopal Church, so I want to talk about the Spirit of God in us and with us. Last week, we celebrated Pentecost, and this is why Trinity Sunday comes after Pentecost. We celebrated the presence and outpouring of the Spirit. But we don't reflect enough that the truth is the Spirit of God is in us. Scripture talks about our lives being a temple, a church in which the Spirit lives and dwells. In our baptisms, we talk about how in baptism we're buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. The very presence and glory of God is in us, and we don't recognize it, and we don't embrace it, we don't own it. Father Ben is so often fond of saying, we have, what, we have everything we already need. The Spirit is with us. So how do we connect with that? How do we allow that Spirit's breath in us to open the eyes of the heart and see the glory that is in us and around us? I'm going to give a simple but profound answer to that love. When we worship God, that's why we're here today, we're worshiping God, I'm not sure we always have the connection in our minds and hearts that we're here, we're loving God, that in the beauty of our language that is part of our liturgy, in the glory of light coming through stained glass windows and these amazing flowers and the candles. And, and I know we have our holy calisthenics as Episcopalians. Stand, sit, kneel. You know, we, we get a workout with our bodies here when we, when we worship. But I sometimes think that we're missing the big picture. 
We're loving God. That these words and images and sounds all around us is our way of saying, God, we love you, we praise you, we adore you, we are grateful that you are in our life, that your spirit breathes in us and all creation. This is loving God time. And my sense is that uh, we struggle a little bit to let our defenses down and, and really just let the love flow. But it's in love that we begin to see and know and respond to the presence of God in us and, and around us. Because God is love. It's the most profound statement about who God is. God is love. And in the very, here I'm going to get a little right brain for a moment. You know, it is, it is Trinity Sunday. In the very heart of God is the relationship of Father, Son, connected and flowing by the presence and energy of the Spirit. That in the very being of God is relationship and, and love. And, and that love beats at the very being of God and flows out into all creation. And the way we try to get at that is we talk about the love of father and son, of mother and daughter, husband and wife, friend and friend, that we know in our own most cherished relationships, we know the great life-giving mystery and dynamic of love. It's what gives us life and meaning and our deepest joy. And our understanding of God is to understand that that very stuff is in the very being of God himself. Love. And it is in love, giving love, receiving love, that the eyes of our hearts are opened to the great mystery and depth and reality of God's goodness all around us. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. But I want to say even a little more about love. Because when Paul talks about that when our eyes are led open, eyes are heart open and the Spirit is leading us, we also recognize that we are loved by God. He says that when we cry, Abba, Father, you know, loving God, speaking to God, it's that very Spirit in us testifying to us that we are children of God that we belong to God, that we are made and created in love, we are sustained in love, we're redeemed in love, that our whole lives are surrounded and enveloped and enfolded by the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, and that this love is indelible, eternal, inviolable. It can't be taken away. It just is, for God is love. So this seeing with the eyes of the heart begins to open up to who we are, who God is, and the deepest truths about our very lives. Children of God, created, formed, sustained, redeemed by the dynamic, eternal energy of God's love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Whoa, now that's Trinity stuff. <laughs> But I want to take it even farther, since I'm working on this today. And that is, after Jesus talks to Nicodemus about, you know, the, the, the love that blows where it will, and you've got to be born from above, and let the Spirit, you know, by water and the Spirit, you're born again. Uh, he then speaks about, and God so loved, there it is, so loved the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. And I know the church for 2,000 years has heard that is, okay, that means I get to heaven if I believe in Jesus. Of course it means that. But that's too small. What it's really saying is that God's love is about healing our hearts. Healing all that's broken and wounded in us and in the world. All our anxieties, insecurities, all our fears. It's about healing all those times in our lives where we've fallen short of God's love and where the world has fallen short of that love. All those hard, painful, ripping, tearing, guilt-laying, shame-inducing, all that muck of life. God seeks to heal through the love of Christ Jesus. That's what Jesus is saying to us. This is not just about a revelatory moment. Oh, wow, God is glorious. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Yeah, it's that. But it's even more. It's about having our life and all creation made whole, made real, made true, made joyous, made full by the love of God. For me, that's what seeing God with the eyes of the heart shows and reveals. God is love. And this is the love that creates, redeems, and heals all of us and all the world. May we today see with the eyes of the heart. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Crying. Abba, Father, let the children of God offer prayers for the needs, concerns, and hopes of all the world, for peace from on high, and for our salvation. Glory Glory and and praise praise to you, you, O living God. For the peace of the whole world, 
for the welfare of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For this gathering and for all those who seek with faith, reverence, and humility our holy and loving God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the newly baptized, illumined by the light of Christ. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, our presiding bishop. Peter, our bishop. And the clergy, and for all the holy people of God. Glory, Glory and, and praise, praise to, to you, you, O living Amen. God. For Joseph, our president, for the leaders of the nations, that they may work for justice, mercy, and peace. Glory, Glory and, and praise, praise to you, you O living God. For all those in need, the suffering and the oppressed, refugees and prisoners, the dying and the dead. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For ourselves, our families, and those we love. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering our blessed Mother Mary, blessed Gregory, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, you, O Lord. Blessed are you, God our Father, who sends us the Spirit of Truth. Hear the prayers we offer this day and breathe upon your holy people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And loving God, this day we also lift up to you all those on our prayer lists here at St. Gregory's. We pray especially for Diana. Pray for David and all those in any need or trouble. We also give you thanks, Lord, for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, remembering especially Alexandra Masters, Olive Grimes, and Reese Warren. We pray for our companion relationships with the Diocese of Haiti, and the Diocese of Tuliara in Madagascar. We pray on this Memorial Day weekend for all those serving in the armed forces and their families. And we remember before you, dear Lord, those who've given lives in service to our nation. And I invite your additional prayers and thanksgivings at this time. As we observe this Memorial Day weekend, I'll end with a collect from our prayer book for heroic service. O Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let, Let us, us confess, confess our, our sins to God. God of all mercy. We confess, we confess that, that we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you, you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit.
keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Peace, Adida. Peace, Walter. Peace, Joe. Peace to you all and welcome. Great to see everybody today. Please be seated for a moment for a few announcements. Great to see everybody. Great to have Caden back in church. We baptized Caden last week. For those who were here, uh, I do want it noted for the record that Caden just didn't want to leave my arms after he was baptized. Isn't that right, Heather? <laughs> so it's great to have uh, Caden and a family here today. Uh, welcome to everyone. So a few announcements to highlight. One is that uh, our new members class, and here's a, a sign of life for us, our new members class is meeting for the first time in person for over a year, and we're meeting after the service today at 11.30 a.m. in the chapel area, which is uh, to my right, your left, that area. So new members and those who are exploring membership, you're invited to join me uh, for a conversation. We're gonna take a tour of the church and we'll start around uh, 11.30. Uh, next week is our traditional Rise and Shine service, which is our family and children's service that takes place at 10 o'clock at the same time our main service takes place. You all know that rhythm. But next Sunday, uh, we're gonna really celebrate the end of the uh, year for Rise and Shine before we resume in September with uh, our normal service outside, but then we're gonna have water slide and a bounce house and a petting zoo. It's really gonna be a celebration of our families and children. So all our families are invited to uh, join for Rise and Shine next week, 10 o'clock. Of course, our regular main service will be taking place uh, in here as well as it, as it always does. So next week, it'll be Rise and Slide, maybe, and not just Rise and Shine. Um, parking. We celebrated last week the groundbreaking of construction, which will begin beginning of June. We're only about two weeks out from that. And I don't care how many times I talk about parking, I know someone's gonna come in and say, Father Andrew, I don't have any place to park. And I will say, I've been talking about that for months now. Uh, so let me talk about it again, and then you can say you, you heard it from me. At least you all have heard it. A reminder that once construction starts, half our parking lot will not be available to us. Well, the good news is half is still available to us, and we're gonna prioritize a parking for our seniors and those who have uh, you know, some special need for parking. But I wanna remind you that, and I've paced this out, 200 yards away, that's only a football field and back, you know, uh, is parking in the Meisner garage. And there is ample, more than we could ever need. Well, maybe we, if everyone came, we'd, we'd overwhelm it. That'd be a good thing. But there's plenty of parking uh, in the Meisner garage 200 yards away. So just a reminder that that's available. Across the street, some of you already know this, uh, people do park in the post office parking lot as well. There's maybe about 20 or so parking spaces available there. Uh, and then there's parking sort of down the block, also about 150 yards away uh, a, a, as well. So there is accessible parking for everyone. But I just want to again remind you uh, that parking will be different starting with construction, which we believe will go on for about three to four months. Uh, we'll, of course, be updating everyone on that. So just a reminder about parking. Uh, Today, of course, is Trinity Sunday, but I'm very aware that it's Memorial Day weekend, as we noted in the prayer that I ended our prayers of the people today. But I'd also like to dedicate today's Eucharist uh, in honor of all the men and women uh, who've given their lives in service to the country. So today, our Eucharist today will be dedicated to the heroes and heroines who have offered their lives in service uh, to our nation in honor of Memorial Day. Finally, in a joyous moment, I'd like to invite uh, Olivia Triggs to come forward. Olivia is one of our high school graduates, and Olivia is the recipient of the annual ECW scholarship, the Episcopal Church 
women's scholarship that honors one of our women in the church who are heading off to college. And Olivia, I'm very, very proud of you. Um, for the past, <laughs> sorry. For the past year, um, you haven't known this, but Olivia has served at On Our Meals with Meaning on two, two Wednesdays, 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 every Wednesday. Uh, and she has been just faithfully serving and in a quiet, faithful way, caring for those in need and being part of our ministry. And it's been a great witness. And I'm very proud of her. And I'm very, very honored that she's the recipient this year. She's going to be going to the University of Charleston. So we'll all visit Olivia and get the good food of Charleston uh, when, when we go to see her. But I offer you a special blessing uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, as you begin your college journey. God bless you, Olivia. Thank you. And just as a footnote to that, uh, I do have to say that I didn't have the check to give her today. I called Rebecca Sorensen in the morning, president of the ECW. She said, the check hasn't been written. So I promised Olivia that I would talk to the parish administrator, her dad, to make sure she gets the check this week. <laughs> birthday blessings, anniversary blessings. Who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary? Who'd like to wave their hand and stand? Andy's got a birthday and Julie's got a birthday. Julie, you get to stand. Don has got a birthday. Okay, anybody else? We got three birthdays. Great. Uh, now let's just do a special prayer for the three of you. Good and gracious Lord, we give you thanks and praise for those moments and times in our lives where we are so mindful and so grateful for your abiding care. Bless Julie and Don and Andy as they mark another year. Keep them rooted, grounded, growing, thriving in your life and love. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you this day and always. Amen. Happy birthday. <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. May the Spirit who overshadowed the Virgin when the Eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and within you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Look at that. Look at that. I tell you what, that's pretty impressive. That is impressive. That is impressive. <laughs>